Hello, hello everybody. So we are going to be looking at uh, databases uh, in application or in action today and uh, not just on paper uh, in theory. So uh, we're going to look at uh, how databases work, uh, how SQL uh, or SQL interacts with databases and yeah, just how databases work in general. So I'm using something called DB Browser uh, for SQLite. Uh, this is basically just a tool for me to visualize what is in the database. And if you normally open like a database file, it'll probably be encoded in some way that's efficient and safe. But this tool allows me to actually see what is in the database, uh, which, which can be useful if you're writing an a SQL script or something. So you can see uh, later um, data will show up uh, in this window and uh, if I want to execute, obviously you don't see anything now because I haven't opened a database, but yeah. And when I tested out this tool earlier, it was a little buggy, it crashed pretty frequently. Like when I tried to run an SQL script, sometimes it would just crash. So yeah, hopefully it doesn't happen uh, when I test it out now. Okay, so let's try to create a new database. Um, so let's put it uh, here. And then, and let's name it, um, let's just name it database. Can I name it database? Yes, I can. Okay, so here we have the uh, database. Now in a relational database system, um, how it works or in this uh, particular database model, uh, what how it works is that within the database, there are tables and a table is basically a table filled with relations. So for example, um, I'll try to uh, draw that out a little um, once I get a text box. Um, up later so and for now just uh, uh let's just add a table or rather add a field to this table so here i'm just going to create a table and this is a table let's call it uh let's call it bank so this is going to be um like the bank's database it's going to be filled with uh, people and their bank balances so for our first field let's put name Actually, putting name is a bad idea in a relational database because there can be duplicate uh, names and usually you want to use something like an ID as an index. And an index in a relational database is just a unique value to each relation that you use to distinguish uh, against other relations. So, for example, if we have like a bunch of uh, a bunch of fields, say let's call this one balance and let's call this one um, say name, like the name of the person. Let's, uh, later we'll just use these two, um, these two fields, but uh, this is just an example. So with index, so if we're using ID as the index, that means for each, um, there can be no duplicate IDs. So each UD, uh, each ID must be unique. There can be duplicate balances. There can be, uh, duplicate names. There can be someone called Bob, uh, like, there can be multiple people named Bob in this uh, database, but there can be no uh, multiple people with the same ID because that is how we distinguish between different people. And when we're uh, like say retrieving a value from the database or trying to modify a value from the database, we do so uh, by providing the relations or yeah, providing the relations index, or in this case, we'll use ID. So let's remove this. We'll just use ID and balance because it's simpler that way. And you can see that as I'm creating like another field, it the SQL script uh, in this box automatically changes. Now, uh, if you're just writing an SQL script yourself, obviously you won't have any of this, but I'm using a DB browser tool that allows me to, uh, well, that makes my life much easier basically. And as you can see here, it's creating a table called bank uh, within the larger database. And there's one field called 
uh, ID, and I just realized that I did not name this, so we'll change this to balance. <clears throat> okay, cool. So, and as you can see, we have the data types beside the names of the fields. So uh, this, this type is an integer. If you've literally programmed with any other programming language, you'd be familiar with what types are, just like the data type, basically. There can be integers, there can be you know, strings. Uh, in SQL, it's called something else, I believe. It is called a text. Um, but yeah, so we do have to specify the um, data type. So why don't we go ahead and create this, this table. And uh, let's create another table called people. So this is going to be a, a table of uh, people full of relations of people's IDs and their names. So this is how we um, have this is how we find the person's name based on their ID, which we will see how to do later. So firstly, ID, and then we can see that the data type is integer, and let's add another field called name. So here we are going to set it to text. So I think in SQL it's called something else actually, it shouldn't be called text, but uh, in, this, uh, in this framework it seems um, that it's called text. So anyways, let's just go ahead and do this. All right, now we have a bank and a people, and these two are tables. So uh, tables are basically, as we said before, I think, they're basically um, like sets of, like collections of relations. Now each relation is, um, so actually let's visualize this in this uh, SQL script that we are going to write now. So let's write an SQL script to retrieve values from the table name. So we want to retrieve uh, people's names and their IDs. Now before we do that, we have to have some values inside the uh, table for it to be meaningful when we are retrieving the data. So how we do that is basically with a insert statement. So let's write insert into. And here, uh, besides, uh, after the into, we put the name of the table. So the name of the table in this case is people. So in, insert into table, uh, or insert into people, now we want to specify the, um, like the sort of like, I don't know what the official word for this is, but the syntax or like the structure of this uh, relation down. So. Uh, if, uh, if we look inside uh, here, for people we set um, the first value inside a row to be a to be the ID, and the second uh, row to be the name or the second column rather. Um, so that is exactly what we will write. So ID and name. And next we want to write values. So this is going to specify what values we are going to insert in this uh, table, and let's insert um, the person with ID one will be called um, Bob, because Bob is a good name, is a good name. Now let's insert, you can insert uh, multiple uh, values by using a comma and um, providing another tuple. <coughs> Excuse me. So the person with ID two, let's set um, let's set his or her name to be Amy. Okay, let's do this. And um, yeah, this looks good. And these right here, this is what is called a relation. Here there is a relation between the ID two and the name Amy. So this is a relation and tables are basically collections of these relations and that is why they are called a, really, uh, a relational database. It's a very powerful way to structure your data. All right, so let's try running this SQL script and hope it doesn't crash. Okay, great, it did not crash. So we can see that, okay, it, um, it ran successfully without an error. Now, uh, if you're using this browser, you can go to this tab and uh, hopefully, oh, for some reason this, oh yeah. I'm viewing the wrong table, so let's check out uh, the people table. 
Now under browse data, we see that uh, the, the data that we just inserted is present inside the database. Now, I like to uh, write changes um, after each change just because uh, this browser seems to crash randomly on Mac OS, so uh, I don't want to have any unsafe changes lying around. So yeah, let's keep going. So let's uh, now let's insert, you know what, let's insert some more people. So let's insert um, a value or an ID three and a name Craig. Craig is an okay name, not as good as Bob though. And let's do another one called um, Dylan. And I, I think I intended to do this alphabetically, but um, Amy and Bob ended up getting switched, so too lazy to change that, so let's keep going. Uh, insert into table, now let's go. Now it ran successfully without an error once again. So let's check out the data. Now we have, uh, oh, this is not very, okay, here we go. This is better. So we can see that we have all of these, um, all this data, all these relations inside this database. So we can see the person with ID one is Bob, the person with ID two is Amy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so now let's uh, insert some values into our um, bank uh, table. But before we do that, I just like to point your attention to something. So as we can see, we uh, we inserted all this data in two different uh, scripts. So in the first script, we inserted Bob and Amy. In the second script, we uh, we inserted Craig and Dylan. And this is an important um, an important trait that a relational database model must have, which is that the data must be persistent. Which means that after the program is finished running, the data must like still be stored in this database. We can see that after we inserted these new values, Amy and Bob just didn't get like deleted or overwritten or whatever. Amy and Bob are still here and we completely finished running that SQL script and changed into this new one and the data is still here. Thus, the data is persistent and this is good because, you know, with other programming languages, say if you're just storing your values inside a map or a Python dictionary, um, after the program runs, uh, usually they get deleted. In most programming languages, they get deleted unless you like save them in some way or something. So yeah, so the data is persistent in a relational database. Now let's insert some values into, uh, into bank. So let's do insert into, for some reason I can't type while I'm talking so annoying <laughs> and uh, insert into bank the table is called bank now let's state the format or it might be called I don't know I, I don't know what the official name is but we'll just call it the structure for now because I think that's an intuitive word for this uh, for this concept so insert into bank and if we can see uh, the bank the structure here is an ID followed by a balance. So let's specify that here. Now let's state our values. So let's um, do all of the all of these um, at once. So we won't separate it into a different script. So let's so uh, ID the person with ID one. Let's give the person with ID one twenty dollars. Now the person with ID two will have fifty. Uh, fifty dollars. The person, the person with ID three, will have um, two hundred dollars, and the person with ID four, unfortunately, only has five dollars. All right, let's see how this runs. Uh, insert into bank. Yeah, no errors. And let's see. Uh, let's check out the bank table. And we can see that here we have the IDs and the balances inserted correctly. And if we want to verify, we can see that it is indeed as we stated inside this SQL script. Great. 
Okay, so right now let's let's check out uh what um an okay I suddenly forgot the name for the statement. Uh, the select statement, how the select statement works before we end this video, because this video is getting a bit long, I think. So a select statement is basically used to, uh, well, select uh, relations from the database, or you can understand it as retrieving a relation inside the database. Like if you have like a physical database, it might be like a bookcase full of paper files, and this would be like retrieving or automatically retrieving a certain paper file from the database based on some trade that they possess. We'll see how we specify the particular trade that they possess later on, but uh, for now, let's check this out. Um, so select, uh, now firstly, we want to spe uh, specify what we want to select. So in this case, let's try just getting all the names out from the people table. So we just want to see uh, what uh, which people are entered into our database let's say. So let's specify that. So select name. So we want to select, select all the names from the database. Now uh, we want to specify from which table we are retrieving this uh, data from. Because if we have multiple tables with the same name for uh, different fields, um, then that'll cause issues. So we have to specify which uh, table we want it from. So in this case, we want it from people since inside the bank table, the uh, name trait or the name field does not exist. So let's do this. Oh, we did not need a comma here. So from people. Uh, now let's just, just see how this runs. Okay, so as we can see, all of the results have been returned. And this is just uh, an arbitrary uh, index. I think it, it's generated by this browser itself. So just ignore this. And as we can see, only the names have been retrieved. And if we can, if we want to retrieve the IDs, we can do this just as easily. Let's save this first. We can do this just as easily. So we can uh, get the IDs from the people uh, table. Now, if we wanted to do the balances, simple, we can just uh, do a select statement on the other table. So we can see balance and we can also select multiple, um, multiple uh, balances or multiple uh, values from different uh, or from, we can select multiple values at a time is what I'm trying to say. God, I'm not very good at with the words. So let's try to select all the IDs and all the balances from the bank. So let's try this. And we can see all of the IDs and the balances have been returned uh, and formatted quite nicely. It's easy to visualize, which is why I like using this sort of uh, tool, database visualization. And if we wanted to get all of the data, now in this case, uh, this is all of the data. So say you want, you had like uh, five columns in each uh, table and you wanted to just select all of them. You can use, I think this is called a wildcard. And in some other languages, like for example, I think with regular expressions, you might be familiar with this symbol, but basically just, this just means everything. So we can see that it does indeed select everything. And this just looks the same as the, as our last query, cause um, there are only two columns in total and we just did that in the last query but yeah you'll have to take my word for it that this just selects all the columns so I think this is enough for one video we looked at um, an SQL or a DB browser stands for database browser uh, and we tried out some SQL scripts namely the insert statement and the select statement so I hope you've learned something from this video and I'll see you in the next one